Okay. And then that should basically take you through everything you learned the last time when you took financial accounting. So these reversing entries, we've already talked about this, so I don't want to spend too much time here. I gave you the example of salaries, and here we are back in salaries. So I'll show you this briefly, we'll do a quick exercise on it, and then we'll move on. So um, reversing entries, I say, are usually for accruals at year end or period end. So the opposite is made the first day of the next period. So I gave you that salaries example. I said if you had $700 in salaries every week for a seven-day week, you know, or for seven work days, and two days of that takes place, and then you have an end of the period. Then it becomes 1231. You have to accrue those two of those days. So you have a $200 accrual that you would re reverse. So here I have 100 in the following period. Okay. And we, we, we now know the rationale of why you do that, because then you go ahead and just do everything. The person who gets the payroll just makes the same journal entry as normal, okay? But the net effect of the reversal is that it takes the expense, if they're, if they're debiting the full amount of the expense in the next period, and then you have this credit there, it nets the expense to what the appropriate amount is for that period, okay? So. You could reverse it. There's a couple of different things you could do here. So if you have an accrued salary for this um, $100, let's just do a quick little thing here. So if you have accrued salaries for $100, that's the number I have up here, so that's the number I'll use. So you make, you make this first journal entry. You debit salaries expense. For $100, you, you credit accrued salaries for $100. One option is that you reverse it. You do that. Okay? The other option is that you don't do anything. Right? So next period, payroll, let's say, is, let's just say it's $500 for the period. It's total. So now you haven't done anything. You didn't, we didn't reverse that entry. So, and payroll comes in and it's $500 for the period. So what do you do? You know you have to pay the payroll, right? It, for $500. So what do you have to credit? Let's start with the easy stuff. Cash. You have to credit cash, you know, for $500. And this is how I, will, I would tell you, especially as you start off, always approach a journal entry with, with what you know first. Okay? And then you kind of can back in and figure out, like, starts to make more sense as you write down what you know, you can get some confidence and then you can figure out what you didn't know, okay? So you know that you have to credit cash for $500. So what the heck do you have to debit? You definitely have to debit salaries expense, but for $400, right. And how do you balance that entry? The accrued salaries is sitting out there, that's a liability. For how much? 100. So if you didn't reverse it, this would be the entry you'd have to make. If you reverse it, what, if, if, if I made this entry and then the, at, you know, at 1231, and then at 1-1 one, one of the following year, I just simply reverse it, accrued salaries and salaries expense. Okay, just doing it, writing it quickly. Now what I do when pay payroll comes in at $500. Exactly. Salaries expense would be 500 and cash 500. Really simple. You don't have to do anything special. You don't have to, you don't have to remember that you had an accrued ex expense out there, nothing. But the net effect is what's your salaries expense? 400 because here it's 500, but you made this reversing entry and that credits the expense for 100. So the net effect is salaries expense is 400, which is the exact same thing as this. Yes. Yes. Accrued expense is a liability. Okay. So why don't you try, just to make sure that you understand that and we bring that home here. Brief exercise 313. Brief exercise 313. So here, it asks you in the letter A to reverse the accrual. What happens on January 1st? So that's the beginning of the next period. So if you just misread the question, I could see that you would have set up the accrual, which would have been the opposite of that, debiting expense, crediting payable. That would have been the correct entry at 1231. The correct entry at 11 
would be debiting payable and crediting expense. Okay, and then the subsequent entry, if you reverse it, would be just do everything as if you had done nothing at all in the prior period, just debit expense and credit cash when payroll comes in. If you didn't make the reversal, you would have had an expense and a payable out there for 40, you had a payable out there for 4,200 from your 1231 entry, December 31st. So your expense for the period for the $7,000 of payroll is actually only 2800 and then you would have debited the $4,200 payable and credited cash. So I saw a few of you, just to make sure I want to clarify, um, when you pay something, make sure that you credit cash, okay? Because when you pay something, your bank account's gonna go down. So you wanna make sure that you, whenever you see paid, that cash goes up, you know, d goes down, or when received, cash goes up. Pay a bull and receive a bull are when you're not actually receiving the cash, okay? Any questions on that? Questions? 